Aloha, top of the morning friends and family. Welcome back to Cusco Uncut. Today's in cut, I'm just gonna do a little recap of what happened last week at the FWC meeting. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out this video up here. We're talking, we've been keeping updates on what transpired after all those animals were killed at the facility in Florida and what's been happening with uh, FWC, US Arc, US Arc Florida. And just wanted to keep that thread going here as we've been doing the past month or so. Um, also, if you want to get one of these Aloha shirts, just check out the link right below this uh, video. There should be a shop there. Aloha time. <clears throat> okay, so the best way I think I can recap is just to read from US Arc Florida's posts on Instagram. As I've mentioned before, the best way to keep up on all this stuff is to be subscribed to US Arc newsletters, to be following US Arc because they're the ones who really are having their nose to the ground and um, are, are really on the front lines of making sure what happens with this is is public and that they're they're, they're on top of it. And uh, my main goal here would be to point you to them because they know what's happening in more intimate details than I do. And I'm gonna share at the end of this video some of my doubts with everything that's happening and and just uh, yeah that, that'll come after. But let me let me start reading some of these posts from US Arc Florida. If you're not following them already on Instagram, go ahead and do that and you can kind of keep up with this stuff and, and read it for yourself and maybe go in the comments and share your support and all, all that stuff. But the first post I'm going to read says, Good news! We packed the house and the FWC commissioners have heard your voices, which is awesome actually. Yeah, they, there was a lot of folks there in person and a lot of folks spoke and made their voices heard and, and did a good job. Some people were very well spoken and... Uh, and I thought did a great job of, of voicing their concerns and opinions, and I, I thought it was a great, it was a great job. Um, they did not vote on the draft rules implementing the whitelist systems that were hastily posted in the hours before this meeting, which you don't know about the whitelist thing. It's basically they're, they're trying to create a list of animals that you are allowed to have versus a blacklist, which just enables the animals you can't have, and that that would be more dangerous to have a whitelist. So you just remove animals from the whitelist, or animals might not even make it on the whitelist that should be on the whitelist, so anyway. Um, the new executive director, Colonel Roger Young, will be allowed the opportunity to address this issue. We look forward to working with Colonel Young and FWC staff in hopes of creating fair regulations that work for Florida's animal keepers and our environment. Option one and option two were serious threats to animal keepers. Our recommendation is a third option, which would expand the successful conditional species permit system. Um, yeah, so and there's a picture of all the reptile folks that were there. Good job, everybody, for showing up. Um, sorry, my camera's not focusing, but go look at the post from US Arc Florida. Uh, we had a big day today. This is the next post. We had a big day today. Animal keepers of all types filled the room at the FWC meeting. We are so proud of all of you. Our speakers were professional, articulate, and passionate, but did not let their emotions get the better of them. US Arc Florida's presence was felt in a huge way. The commissioners decided not to force through the damaging whitelist. Oh, did I just read this already? Sorry, did I, I don't know if I just read the same post twice. No, this is a different post. It's just reading the same as the other one. <laughs> um, all right. Here's some of the quotes here. In this post, there's some quotes from um, the U.S. Arc and, and quotes from what Colonel Roger Young said. <laughs> So, Young said, I have put a directive to all our investigators and staff that we will not be euthanizing any animals at this point unless it's, in parentheses, an ex ex exigent circumstance in the field regarding something else. So, you know, it could be argued they haven't, didn't euthanize animals in that other sense because they just kind of went and killed them, didn't follow their own protocol. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm trying not to get caught up in that stuff because it's just going to make me angry. Uh, okay, so here's something by... Phil Goss, that Phil said. Uh, Phil, love that guy, man. Phil, you're doing a great job. I think everyone could admit there were some mistakes made on April 6th. I hope we can learn from those and move forward on this, Goss said. 
One of the mistakes I would like to point out is in 2021, commissioners were presented with data from staff that showed only about a dozen people in the state were working with restriculated pythons or Burmese pythons. None of those people were grandfathered and allowed to continue business, even though in the example of coffee, he had permits and had been licensed by FDPC for over a decade. If we just allowed him to be grandfathered and keep doing business as long as he was in compliance, April 6th never would have happened. An FWC enforcement action later required coffee to continue caring for the snakes until the agency could do something about them, which ended up occurring with officers killing snakes in April. They could have reached out to the industry and said, we have these animals in the state that are not supposed to be there. They're prohibited. Here's an issue. There is an issue of getting them out. Um, that, that was Elizabeth from Ozark, Florida said that. Reach out to the industry, let us work with you instead of, just euthanizing these, instead of just euthanizing these animals. There are people who really want them. There's zoos, there's places. I could have made calls and had them out by the morning, yes. So, yes, good morning. Uh, so, I'm glad all that happened. I'm glad that the meeting took place. I'm glad that there was such good representation there from the reptile community in U.S. Arc and U.S. Arc, Florida. The thing that, the, the, the doubt that just creeps into my mind is that Every time I see something happen where the government messes up, the people responsible don't even get a slap on the wrist, and there's a hearing, and it's talked about, nobody's held accountable, and nothing ever really truly gets solved. And I pray and hope that is not the case with this situation. I pray that U.S. Arc and all the work they're doing there has fruit and that and I mean not that they haven't had success with things in the past they have gotten things changed but it seems like there's such a heavy tide pushing with these this legislation that is anti-reptile keeping and I, I just I just pray that it doesn't go the way that it's been going which is keeping keeps pushing us back keep pushing us back and with our backs against the fence, backs against the wall. And, and I would have loved for there to be an apology to the keepers for what happened. And at least some accountability, which it, comment down below if I missed something, but I, I didn't hear anybody get held accountable for the mistakes that were made. So that would have been something that would have, would have gone a long way with me personally and probably with a lot of us out here watching from the sidelines as well. So we'll try to keep you posted on this subject as, as more information comes out and, and as it goes on, but more likely than not, I'll get tired of talking about it. I've been tired of talking about it, honestly, but I'm, I'm still doing it because I feel like it's, it's part of my duty here with this channel. <sighs> okay. Next video, we're just going to show you some cool snakes. And, yeah. Uh, personal update, sugar thing's going okay. I pretty much have cut out sugar completely. Last night, I found a leftover lactation cookie that my wife had made however many weeks ago in a cupboard and ate that. So, I haven't been completely sugar-free, but mostly, mostly. That was the only incident. I haven't been just, like, binging out on sugar. And, actually, I had a whole five days solid where I had no sugar at all. So baby steps you guys take care of yourselves take care of each other and we'll see you tonight tonight on triple b tv for the uh i'm sorry <laughs> that would have been last night anyway you guys take care of yourselves take care of each other we'll see you next video aloha